Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Frostway Central 101. My name is Chris, and today I am joined by... Brayden. And we are going to be coming right back at you to start off 2020 NFL Draft Tape with LaVisca Chanel. The I think I'm saying that right, right? Yes. Yeah, the wide receiver from the University of Colorado. Yep. Uh, so he is listed here unofficially, of course. He's still only July at this point at 62225. Uh, and as of now, I think, or maybe that's Chef age, he'll be 20.8 years. No, old. he's, no, he'll be, he's 20.8 now. He turns 21 in October. Oh, okay. So that's current age. So, yeah, yeah. Bump what, that no, up by, like, if what? you look to the left of it, it it's literally has his date of birth. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. Um, if you guys want to check out this screen here, definitely feel free to pause the video and go ahead. And it gives you a little bit of background about like his family life and stuff like that. Uh, injury history is there as well. Uh, so shout out to, I believe, Jesse Fritch is the one who made this particular profile. That was actually last week. Uh, so... Feel free to check out the database. They do an awesome job with it every year. Uh, this is not ours, but we use this to help us consolidate the film and get to games that we need to show you guys. So props to them for that. Uh, and definitely feel free to check this out when you guys get the chance. So uh, as for you, Brayden, do you have anything that you would like to start with before we get into the Nebraska tape? He is the fucking goat. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> I'm joking. The, he is he is easily the best player I've seen in, for CU in my lifetime, I'd say. That's Again, great. this is that's before Richard Salam. That's before well, that's after Richard Salam. And that's after Cordell Stewart, so probably not ever, but at least in my lifetime, he's been the best player I've seen. Yeah, and based on what I have seen from what I remember last year in line games, which was 10 months ago now, it seems like, uh, the dude seems like a top 10, top 5 type of, of guy. Yeah. And yeah. what's going to be really interesting, I think, and we'll get more into this after the video too, is how he's going to com compare to some of the other receivers in this class. Because I was, re I was reading a tweet from one of the draft scout guys on Twitter the other day, and they were saying something like Jerry Judy could legit go number one overall as a receiver. So, like, to be able to kind of see where he fits, I'm not sure if he's as good as Judy is personally, but, like, if you're number one, two wide receiver in this class, you're still easily a top five talent. Yeah. This receiver class is probably the best single position draft class at this point in time in July that we have seen a single year, maybe since we've been watching tape. Yeah. So, uh, very exciting and definitely looking forward to seeing uh, how he shapes up compared to some of these other guys. But uh, anything else before we get into it? No, I'm good. Cool. Let's get right into this. So here we go. Uh, of course, as we've already said a few times, it is only July at this point, so we do only have one game. Uh, but fortunately, this is actually a very, very long game for a receiver. There's about 14 minutes of cut-up, which is very, very good. So, shout-out to Caddy for putting this together, and this should be an F already, I think. Let's see if you can see a date on this. Alright. I wish they had. Oh, yeah, and by the way, I forgot to point this out. Uh, Chanel is number two. Two. Oh, man. Okay. Nice time order play. Lines up in the slot quite a bit. Yeah, he he lines up practically everywhere. If I, the the two other games I wish we could have is CSU and Arizona State. If we could have two the those two games, that would have been great. Oh. 
Montez is also one of the higher thought of quarterbacks in this year's class. He's a bum. So I don't necessarily get this. Uh, you're lying. I mean, okay. So one thing that we'll find more, explore more as this tape progresses is Lavisca Shino is a blocking receiver. He knows how to block. He can wall people for at least for someone his size. But yeah. really, to line him up, what amounts to in line? I don't really get it. Yeah. So, any thoughts on uh, maybe what Colorado was doing last year? <laughs> As someone who watched the team more than just five minutes of Chanel tape? Uh, if I, if I, if, if you got me talking about our season last year, we'd be here for five hours. So, basically, our coaching staff last year was incompetent. And, ba- and after Chanel got hurt, it, it, our entire, basically our entire team was get the b- ball to Chanel, let him outscore the others. Yeah, that that was our game plan for as a team last year. Is let's just get the ball to Ch- Chanel and pray to God he outscores the other team. So we did not have a very good coaching staff last year. So trust me, the, this angered me when I saw this live too. It just seems like I, I, another thing too is I, she, he's a not a small guy. No, he's not. I mean, like Megatron, 6'5", 235 out here is going to be bullying people, but like he's a pretty decently sized receiver. And I get that the big slot is becoming more and more of a trend in the NFL nowadays, and we saw that a lot last year's class with AJ Brown. But I don't necessarily think at this point that we have gotten to the period of time where lining up as a, a rece- your primary receiver, mainly, as a blocker is... Um, intelligent? I don't want to say intelligent, but it's not necessarily the move that, Rational? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a fair <laughs> way to put it. It just seems almost too far ahead of the trend. And like, okay, it's it's cool now to put tight ends in the slot, and it's cool now to have running backs out wide and that and Z. Like we see guys like C Mac changing the game. We see guys like Travis Kelsey and Zach Ertz and all that. Like no offense, for example, for a, another Colorado team. And. I don't know why you would want to take a playmaker and move him inside. Most of the time, you want to take bigger playmakers or smaller playmakers and move them outside. So, I don't know. And even if it is a run play, which I think this is. (sighs) Yeah, I'm pretty sure he catches this. Yeah, that's a nice over-the-shoulder grab. So actually, basically, you go. Yeah, basically, after he got hurt, we still did the same stuff, but without Chenault to bail out Montez for being a terrible quarterback. So since this is a target play, let's actually go over this a little bit real quick, uh, and actually discuss the actual stuff that we're here to, to kind of go over. So one thing that I really like about Chenault is he has incredible body control. And this is something that repeats itself consistently throughout every single game that you'll see of his. Uh, and, uh, again, we only have the one to watch today with you guys, but uh, this is something that you're going to expect you want to see next year as well. Yeah. Uh, his ability to control his body in the air, get his hands up. You can see here, hands catch, hands on the ball. Really, really nice to see it from a young receiver. Doesn't have to really get a lot of extra work with the jugs when he gets to the pro level. Uh, eyes on the ball, head perfect position, gets it off the ground pretty nicely as well, nice vertical ability, uh, which produces obviously good explosive explosion results. So, 
Uh, overall, just uh, there's a lot to really like about what he's able to do, even just in this frame, uh, let alone throughout this play. And of course, you can talk about like the separation and things like that. But for this particular type of play, I don't even necessarily know if that was really schemed open all that well. Uh, this isn't one of those plays where he's going to be breaking and cutting on routes and trying to create that separation with his legs, so much as trying to make a down the field catch. Uh, on a not so well thrown pass, <laughs> so that's going to become a trend. Your thoughts on this play? Yeah, I mean, you summed it up basically. He just does everything so well, you know. He does everything so well, and that's going to become a trend of not catching, of catching not well thrown balls. A same formation ish. At least in his in terms of Shino's alignment. And he, oh. the dude's a wide receiver. Like if it's you really want him to simple. block, why put him outside? Why put him in on a screenplay? So, one thing I will uh, point out about this that I want to check out on play that he's not being targeted uh, is release move. He's not really being pressed at the line here. Uh, but how is he going to break coverage? Okay, nice. So, whoops. I pushed the right click button instead of left. That's my fault. Uh, but what you're going to see here is he's going to play this outside, yeah, outside shoulder of the nickel dash safety. I don't know who Semi is, but he immediately takes that outside leverage toward the boundary, which is just simple. And then just outruns him. It's own play. I mean, still, yeah. CU has a lot of good receivers, Again. actually. We had a good amount of receivers last year. I'm pretty sure, yep. This Why? Oh, what was I'm pretty, the point? I think that was actually an option. Um, if I'm, I'm trying to play the devil's advocate here. That That's is my, a really poorly designed, at least in my opinion, very poorly designed option play. Well, I mean, if Montez, yeah, okay, never mind. I don't. I mean, I get like the whole premise of the rig option here. I don't get the premise of the Chano motion option. Uh, no, actually, no. I think it is a read option here. I'm, well, I don't. It is a read option with the QB and running back. I don't get the point of Chanel's motion. Uh, you know... Because, like, okay, like, if you look at the quarterback and the running back, that's fine, right? But I'm watching what Chanel's doing on this motion here, right? Chanel, what, uh, close enough, whatever. Not that important. He just flicks the defense. He doesn't block. He doesn't... He's ahead of the quarterback, so what about a forward lateral? Oh, whatever. Red zone look. Hopefully this will show... Oh, okay. Yep, offside. Oh. He got held a little bit. He, he, can we go back to that? Oops. My bad. Rip. Oh. Yeah, we'll get, I want to see the move he does here. He got off the line nice, considering. Yeah, and then he got absolutely held. <sighs> Outside move. Yeah, there we go. Good job by McIntyre to get open. They are giving him a lot of space. Well, this was... You have to consider, this is week two, so not everyone's... Not everyone knows about him, because he only had seven catches his freshman year. See, my guess about what happened is they saw his game against CSU, and they're thinking, it's Colorado State, we're in Nebraska, we, we can play him off, and we have the talent to make up for it. And then they found out that they don't have the talent to make up for not playing off. 
That's my guess at what happened. My guess is that they're trying to basically assume that based on the fact he's a 6'2", 225-pound receiver, that he's probably going to be more physical at the line of scrimmage more than fast. So they're mm-hmm. trying to keep him in front of the defensive backs, who they would predict have more speed. So they're going to probably try and bait Montez into throwing and then attack downhill. Because they don't want to get him jammed at the line and then have him be able to release past. Although he didn't get into the NFL, I'm pretty sure. Trayvon McMillan was a good back for us last year. He may have a 90 spot. He he probably, yeah. That's gone. Just hand off. Rip. That was a bad decision. Yeah. He didn't read that right, Montez. You'll if you watch Steven Montez tape, you'll figure out that's a trend. They followed the motion. That was actually a not horribly designed play. It just yeah, And then he Oh, this play was insane. I remember this one. And then, yep, okay, I know the next play that happens. This is also going to be a trend with Chanel. So, one thing that you're going to want to look for, too, is how he plays after the catch. Uh, And you're going to see a great, uh, I want to say, showcase of that here. Uh, Yeah. Just how he makes this guy, boom, makes a miss. Miss, and then he fights through another four. And he fights through four guys to get it to fourth and inches. And then. So for being a bigger, the point with that I'm trying to show is with him being mm-hmm. a bigger receiver, he's not uh, slow. Mike Evans type big yeah. body possession come down with the catch type of guy. He has a little bit of shaking and shimmy to him too. Yeah. Uh, which is really. Yeah, nice. This is a lot of it. He did a lot of wildcat for us. Oh, and he got in. Nice fight for yards straight. And then he got the touchdown. Same spot. Oh, man. Trust me, several admins in the admin box were, were, com- were asking me why they did this too. Trust me, you are not the only one to complain about this. But, like, what's interesting, though, is I, 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 I do like him as a blocker. And the whole theory of putting your better blocker in line, I guess, kind of makes sense. Yeah. But at that point, he's basically being used as a tight end who plays yeah. in the slot. It, I, I'm not really sure I'm a huge fan of that kind of hybrid. But, like, he, he blocks. I mean, nice by angle control. He's keeping him out of the play. He's holding on without committing a holding penalty. Uh, he's doing, like, really nice blocking technical work. That, like... They're shouldering a little too much there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then... Same thing. And they're running him counter. When they throw the football. Whoa, what? 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 (laughs) (laughs) Do you now see why our offensive coordinator is no longer with us? So, I get it's first and ten. This isn't exactly third down. Yeah. 
And they are bringing a Blitz package. Uh huh. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're rushing basically their entire front. But why are you utilizing? Again, this is someone who's a, a decent blocker, still. So it, it's not like they're using a bad blocker. It's just that happened that that blocker happens to be your best, your best player. Team. Yeah, no, not just best, the best player on the whole damn team. On a passing play. Yeah. Or what at least appears to be a passing play. Oh, that play. Lindor. Lindor crushed that one. Just, oh my goodness. He's running it. He could have gotten it out so much quicker than that. They had a deep safety on him. Same thing. Where's the coverage? That the deep safety? Just right. This is a third and five. They're basically giving you a free first down. Even in zone. I mean, to be fair, he did kind of shake a little too much at the. Yeah. Right at the route point, but. Oh, he could have gotten it out so much quicker. And honestly, I don't know if this was an RPO. I. Still getting better at identifying these things myself. I don't know, but but if this was an RPL, even the other side, to be fair, pretty much anywhere but the decision. You have made. so much space. There should be one of those things where it's like it's a, it's a, but it's one of those where it's like if if he's so wide open, just pull it back and throw him the ball, you know? Yeah, Something an RPL. Like, I, I think that I think that was a read option, I wanna say. Oh never mind. Flea flicker. This OC is such a try hard. Oh yeah. Rip. I mean, pure uh, uh, that ball placement was extraordinary. What happened there? Okay, so first off, let's talk a little bit about Shino's route. First, first things first. I would Not like the to best. see him get. Oh, dang! I backed that up. So I get that he's running a quick slant, but you still need to get farther back enough to be able to beat these linebackers or defensive linemen. Kind of hard to tell what they are. I think they're linebackers. He should still be a little bit farther back uh, so that they, they can't basically cut him off. I don't know, man. So, okay, never mind. I actually don't need that concept on first down though. Same thing, you've got him on either the deep safety or a linebacker. One thing I've noticed about Chanel like is that Yeah. Is that he his route running could be better. Nice separation, at least. Consistent hands as well. Same spot. I'm going to bet they...
it's hard on a receiver when you start them basically on the line and then diagonal block out. Yeah. Release. Uh, a little reachy. It was ended up a screen pass, so it didn't really matter. Kind oh, of Juwan. want to see him be a little bit more. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's Juwan. Or... A little bit more reactive. Ooh. <sighs> we should have honestly blown out Nebraska. Our defense had such an incredible game. Incredible game. The defense did. Giving up 21 points to Nebraska before halftime? That's incredible. the last of the points they give up. Oh. I'm pretty sure. Either that or give up another touchdown. All right, let me... Re they played an incredible second half. That's a hold. And that was a terrible throw. That was a terrible decision, more so than a terrible throw. Yeah, but... Yeah, that... Yeah, that was a hold. No. You know, they... Third... The second half, they either gave up, like, a touchdown or... I'm pretty sure they gave up, like, no points. Look at this hold they do on him. Uh, yeah, he grabs the arm. And tries to redirect the shoulder. Yeah, that, that was a if terrible... If he were targeted, decision. he would have shown the flag. And, like... I'm assuming that he's going to be on this guy. There are so many route combinations that you could use from the 25-yard line. Well, regardless of, of what people thought of Shino at this point, if he had broken out, if he, that's still a receiver. Even if he's your fifth string receiver, your tenth string receiver, your long snapper, that's still a receiver who's not really being covered down the field. There's so much. Oh my goodness. I, the screenplays. At some point, that, that needs to be audible because you have so much space to run some sort of post concept, slant concept. Uh, uh, I don't even level cuts. Level cuts. Uh, I don't really know if levels would work because you had the, the doubles on the outside. But I'm, I'm thinking of something that would attack this middle space. Because as soon as he moves out to cover that slot, the actual slot, he has the ability to undercut this linebacker on slant and go over the top the field, or, or go over the go, yeah go over the top do that little dig route, and then bam, he's wide open. Or a and post that's... or a post cut, something that exploits the middle of the field with literally a slot receiver on a linebacker. That could be Not, Deion Jones. That could be what other good fast, quick middle linebacker? Luke Keekly, Bobby Wagner, uh, Devin, Devin guys. Bush. But like, uh, basically any linebacker, Chanel, in theory, should win that battle against pretty much any linebacker. Yes, most receivers should be able to be a linebacker on a middle of the field route. In a one on one situation. This is turning into a less of a LaVisca Chenault video and more of a rant on our offensive coordinator. And like cool beans, you're running your screen on second and ten. Okay, at least he's a man here. Release move. Nice. Good wing. Oh, great wing inside. Nice defense. But still, uh, at least was, there's something to actually talk about here for a change. 
I really like his inside release move. Bam, nice stutter, and then jerked him right in. Almost knocked him off balance. That is he, he almost, excellent. Release. He made untouched dirt. That's a big, big W for Shingo at the line. Yeah. Wide open. What? What was that read? What is that read? I mean, <laughs> like, dog. Bro, he's moving over at this point. <laughs> that's a that's like an easy seven <laughs> yards. He's not getting touched until that 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 defensive back right there. <laughs> God, he is literally shifting over, and he's moving back to take the deeper. Even if he wanted to force this to the deep receiver, you're probably being the defensive back, because there's they, a ton of open space for that receiver. Yeah, I don't Basically, care if you I, throw this. I don't if care if it's a primary read. I don't care if it's your secondary read. You need to kind of read the defense and have a semblance of the concept of coverage. You go. Literally, if he throws to Chanel, he's not getting touched at least until the 35, at the least. I mean, fair play to Evans for actually making it a good – Kyle Evans for making it a good play. But that was more of a good play by the running back than a good throw decision. All right. I mean, this is what happens when the coach's son is one of the main receivers for your team. <laughs> Number 14 is McIntyre's kid. I I don't even really care about who's getting targeted. I'm just watching them running diagonal blocks with the wide receiver across the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know, think I don't know who his name was. But I'm glad we got rid of his ass. Well, at least they got him out that time. That was actually Decision. a good read. Yeah, Kyle Evans was pretty good for us last year. Oh, nice fight for guards. First out. That could have been a penalty, though. That was actually really good block by Chanel. I still but hate that assignment. Uh, your, your play design is horrid, uh, but that was really nice block by Chanel to kind of move him out of the lane. Oh, that was just a dis- that yeah, that was just a disaster from the beginning. Third and seven. Okay, wide open player. Motion. Nice to see. <sighs> that is what happens when you put a receiver on a defensive end. I don't, Throw it away. I don't even care who you put them on. It's the assignment. Whoops, I backed you up too far. Do you see what is wrong with this play? Uh, let's see. We have our best player coming in as an inline blocker. That's a, that is probably the 
third or fourth worst issue on the play? Uh, yeah, I don't know. My brain is fried at this okay, point out so of frustration. First off, you have a screen pass wide open. Oh, yeah, there's that. The so, uh, if this is, in fact, a screenplay, you have time to get it to your receiver. Secondly, why is he coming down the line? That's a good, I, you know, that's kind of what I meant in line blocker diagonally. Why are you sending a receiver to block down the line? If you are using a receiver as a blocker. See what the outside guy is doing. That's one option. Yes, is using him as an actual blocker for the screen. Or second, shift your line so that you don't have a triple team on one guy here and a wide open dude for your receiver. Or, Who, by the way, is your best down. player. If you're going to put him in a one-on-one matchup, which is still not a good idea, shift those guys down so that he winds up on the defensive lineman, at least on his side of the field. What were you going to say? Pretty much what you're going to say. If you're going to use him as a blocker, at least put him... To where he's on the, he doesn't have to run across the the damn line of scrimmage. So yeah, I was like, you have to realize that when we mention all of this, it's not a receiver. Not only is it a a receiver, it is our best offensive weapon that we've had in about a good decade. Because yeah, he because the only other player who can come up to him probably in a while has been what Nate Soldier back to Yari oh, Philip wow. Lindsay and even then Philip Lindsay Philip Lindsay was better in the NFL than he's been in college so it's like you have to remember that we when we're talking about this we're talking about CU's best player when we I just I can't emphasize that enough when we when we say this all right uh, roll the tape and then another thing, too, to briefly bring up is it looks like Montez is looking right at the pressure. He does yeah. still realize that the actual screen receiver is open, right? Uh, let's see. Nah. I mean, well, I, I'm not sh- asking if he realizes that he's still open. I mean, like, instead of running out of the pocket and throwing that away, could he not have just thrown that to the screen receiver? Oh, no, no, he absolutely could have. No, he, he, that was still definitely open. Nice drop concept. Stick route. No, don't, my God. Oh, McIntyre sucks. If you can't tell, I'm not a fan of a lot of the players on this team. Okay. Um, I mean, at least in Montez's de- de- defense, he was kind of moving because he had a guy right in his face. Well, I'm not even really worried about the, the throw. I'm interested in the route. Was this yeah. like a stop and go or something? Because like, he completely reverses his body around. I don't know. That's a good question. He almost goes through a spin cycle a bit. I, I don't know if that's by design. Where he or does, he just like, like, because normally if you're running out, right, you don't, like, reverse this in. and, like, curl it. Most of the time if you're running out, I mean, some guys will, like, turn and stop and go. That's a really weird route cut. Especially with that much separation. He likes... I don't know. Not really a big deal. Because it was... 
just inefficient thing movement. Okay, let's try finding the space. <laughs> oh man. Oh, rip the head. In the backfield? Okay, that's at least something different. Still a terrible decision. He was better off for letting that go. Or he would have been hammered behind the line. So, well, to your left, right, Montez. Oh. That was a halfback screen. I can't really blame him. Yeah, man, never mind. Oh man, terrible blocking. The offensive line got destroyed. Jeez. And it's shot finding the space. Great concept of wearing a spice, you know. I really like how he's able to get around and, and oh nice, they're gonna show us the wide look too. Right there. Oh look, he's looking right at him too. She's probably should have thrown it. But yeah, regardless, that's a really nice job by Shino to find the green space in the grass. Oh he yeah. oh my god, dude. Oh, did you see that? Yeah. For those of you who didn't, I'm just going to pause this at the hopefully ideal frame. Like, it, it might be a little hard to... Well, okay, at this point he is being completely destroyed because the O-line stinks. But... If he had time, that's a touchdown. <sighs> Actually, he, he's open enough for a touchdown. The main point being, he got behind the defender. Yeah. That was a bit early on the throw. Was he being pressured? Did you notice? Uh, I did not notice. Not really. Not at all. Yeah, he released that way too early for my taste. And again, okay, it's thirty nineteen, so this makes a little bit more sense. But they are very clearly playing deep, just giving him all this room. Oh, and they dropped defense alignment. Okay, interesting. Oh, he yeah, actually might have gotten that. Dang. Okay, nice blocking. Evans got absolutely demolished. And that was a late hit. Um same thing. Okay. I didn't see the I didn't see the corner. It was kinda high hidden behind the scoreboard, but I was about to be like, um, quick question, where is uh, the, the defense? Yeah, they're just playing him 10 yards off. I mean... He probably won't be getting that this year. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, the, earlier though, he might a lot more than you expect, because he's someone who can wing at the line. And we yeah. saw his release move earlier, if you, if you line a less physical corner up on him... Those are straight up bully you at the line and get past you. Which might be even worse because you can wing a lot more vertical stems and just exploit down the field with your explosion. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a bit far off. <laughs> Especially, yeah. and what you're probably going to see a lot more of next year is probably going to be seeing more linebackers playing zone on the intermediate part of the field. So that if they mm -hmm. do decide to undercut with a slant, you're going to have a linebacker there to undercut the route. Yeah. 
Nice separation. Unfortunately, not able to see how he created it, but doing a nice job of creating some space there between himself and the, the defender, which is always nice. Oh, dear mother of Jerusalem. And, like, okay, here's the other thing, and I don't, I don't, I'm going to assume, this may not be the best move, assume that this isn't on Chanel for doing this, but if you're going to motion him across the line, then why is he not blocking? I'm going to I mean, guess that this is not this was, fault for not blocking, and that he's being told. I mean, to be fair, that this who is, is a, there to block if he's moving? Like, who is there to block? The guy that makes this play. Fair enough, but still. Like, look at the linebacker who's coming literally right underneath him. Yeah, that's. So I'm going to be assuming here. That he is being told to straight up motion out. And that that's not on him for doing that. Which makes the play design look even worse. But yeah. still. I mean, that's a fair assumption. Considering some of the other stuff we have seen up until this point. And he's not even like turning around to even bother looking at the play. Yeah, that's definitely by design, dude. That's a pop-up. Which makes that motion even more pointless if you're not motioning him over to block. Why are we having him stay back and block on a pass play? Especially when they're only rushing four. And the well, pressure it... still gets there. Your O-line is abysmal, dude. I mean, I, uh... I shouldn't be talking too much because Michigan's last year wasn't too great, but... I mean, at least you had a quarter uh, a coach who knew how to actually use his talent. Okay, target. Got it, I believe, right? Oh, nice yeah. catch. So, again... He has really... You go. He he has really, like, sturdy hands. Like, he, he doesn't drop much. Even under contact. Well, it wasn't even necessarily more so the threat of a drop. It was more so the fact that this ball could have easily been barely overthrown. And he yeah. could have underran it. Um... But yeah, he gets like a nice little late burst. Excellent extension with the length. I'm really interested to see based on that catch what his arm length ends up becoming. Because uh, he looks really, really long-armed. And it looked like he ended up completing the process. So, very nice. Left down the block. Eh, I don't blame him at that point. It's a terrible play call. That's one thing I'm going to note in my report is that. Oh, man. Yeah. You really get to see. That was. He definitely ooh. held on to that. But you really get to see the extension there uh, with the arms. Wingspan is going to be. Very interesting to see. And it's like he didn't even bobble this once he caught it. It's like he caught it and secured it. Like, like boom. Like, it's not moving anymore. He just, he got it. And that's what happens when you hands catch. Yeah. I mean, let's emphasize that as much as we can. The hands catching is a, a critical component in why that was the case. Um, but, man, that extension. Oh. That's going to be something that separates. It doesn't even hit the. I don't think that even hits the it ground. Doesn't. No. That's a clean catch. Uh, yeah, that was. But yeah, that that extension and ability to the wingspan. It's going to really separate him from some of these other guys in the class. Nice initial first punch. And actually, he's score. actually creating enough movement there. Oh, yeah, and then we missed the extra point. <sighs> How we won this game, I still don't know.
Good balance. He's really living some nice uh, ring after the catch straight. Yeah. Oh, nice on second. I mean, to be fair, he's kind of... That was a good That's catch. A nice catch. There's, there's no reason that catch needed to be that good because he was wide open, but still, good catch. Oh, number twenty-five. Was... I'm pretty sure he. I'm pretty sure twenty-five is the guy who who becomes an absolute idiot later and basically saved the game for us. Bro, what was that play design? That was actually almost an amazing throw. Uh, forget the amazing throw. You're not going to get an amazing throw if you can't block for three seconds and you max protect. You know what happened is... Oh, it's a screen. That's why. Yeah, and then I guess he just decided to go deep. Actually, never mind. I figured out why he went deep, because we only put one blocker outside when there's two defenders on a screen. Yes. And then you had Chenault come across the line of scrimmage to... <laughs> I don't know which guy he's on, but there's no <laughs> way you shouldn't them. have... All three of them. Put your wide receiver you know, as an offensive lineman to block three linebackers. What a move. That's probably not a good idea. <laughs> I mean, he has the running back, I guess, cutting him to help. So the running back probably takes the inside guy. Yeah. And, yeah, he failed. Because it's... I, I, again, he just third and eight, so it's not exactly yeah. a short distance down. But, like, that's an easy curl route. Jeez, this offensive line. Oh, yeah. Is this the one where we don't get it, or is this the one where we do? This is... Looks like he does. Nope. Oh. Uh, no, nah, I don't think he got it. That could have been a horse collar, it looked like, though. Yeah. Oh, they gave it to him. Okay. Yeah, I was like, there was two that were, like, really close, and they gave us one. Like... Having two Chenaults next year is going to be fun. Oh, kind of whipped on that block. Poor hand placement. Yeah. Not a lot you can do about that when he's moving down the line. I mean, it's like he could be doing better, but at the same time, at, at, at a certain point, it's not his fault for being put in a horrific place. That was a good play. Good job, McMillan. This is going to turn into an hour-long video with how much we've complained about these play designs. <laughs> oh, dear. Rip the O-line for the tenth time this game. F. <laughs> At least there's somebody here. That's okay, <laughs> There's so many route combinations you can do with that kind of coverage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Move them out. Dude. Okay. Like, I, I understand why Montez doesn't trust his arm because that's very easily interceptable if he doesn't have the arm strength to... By the way, he doesn't. So, yeah. Lucy threw it away. Yeah. Nice. nice. 
I'm interested to see how he got on the ground. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, jet reverse. Probably would have been safer if he's just taking that out, but all right. Also, Rip 34. Yes. Rip Trayvon. That was very interesting there, Kyle. Go back dive. Uh, no, you should stop this, like, now. Oh, nice. You should have ran the full bat dive. Now, this is the one where we go for it on fourth down and we don't get it. It's this play of coming, the fourth down here. <sighs> also, note the other wide receiver. Yeah, the, that's why I was saying snap it now, because even if you... Honestly, I'd honestly rather throw it to McIntyre because it's a shorter throw, you know, than have Chanelco block. That's not announcing a Drew Lock signing Broncos Twitter, but okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, seven, six, eight. Seven, eight. Eight in the box. Let's call a run play. Yeah. I don't necessarily think this is an RPO, so I'm not going to put this on Montez. I think this is just a straight run that failed. Oh, it is a straight run that failed. But you know why it failed. Because we ran against a box that was limited with eight? Yes, exactly. That's kind of... that. Basically, that's what happened to the Broncos. That's well, the basically Broncos, why Philip wins. didn't have much of a choice. Well, I mean, yeah, because to be fair. half of your offensive skill talent was in the running back position last year. And But at the same time, it's more of, yeah. Whereas yep, this Colorado is, should be doing the exact opposite in capacity. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. Let me guess this. Yep, yep, this is the one where we don't get it. Like, well, if let you're, me guess. It's a run play. Yeah. Like, if you're going to have Chanel be an inline blocker, this is the fucking play to do it, dog. When it's fourth and a foot, maybe a yard, this is the play where you should, if you want to have Chanel be on the line of scrimmage to block, this is the play where you should do it. I don't know if that's necessarily the best idea ever, though, because at that I'm point saying, you're still moving that guy inside. <sighs> All right, whatever. Anyway. And at that point, you're just creating an even more loaded box with even more blocking confusion. If anything, oh, I would no. try and open that up as much as possible and try and run a, a, a sweep or a counter. Anything but directly what anything right but what gut. we do here. Yeah, basically it's the opposite of what we do here. Because when you're running up the gut, you have, you're running at the knee of the line. You're running at your, your defensive tackles. Actually, hold on. Wait a second. Is this a pitch play? I'm confused. It's a spread option. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't work. Okay. The premise in itself actually isn't as terrible as I would think. Yeah. It's just poorly executed blocking by the 64. Because he doesn't quick enough to get to the linebacker. It was a good read by Montez. So he should have had it. Can you look for that date on here? All right. Nice cut. Another run play. Nice cut. At the line. Oh, he just went straight out. Interesting. Okay. Probably because it was a run play. That was a very odd pick play. 
Yeah. I was probably oh, a little yeah. bit too much straight up pushed by Shino. Yeah. I don't know if he necessarily sort of pushed him like that. In the pros, that's getting called. It, but at the... Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, that's a bit past five years. Oh? Uh, I mean, you could argue that's within five. Or is it... No, it's not within five. It's within one yard of the line of scrimmage, right? I'm tripping. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Ignore what I just said. And even so, I, it was more so passing interference more so than... Yeah. Nice catch. Nice oh, okay. Ooh, nice juke. I mean, when there's three people around, there's only so much can you, you can do. Can you put that D down here? Nice outside release. Great second step. Explosive. <laughs> And then we got it. You need a little bit of light. At least a good slant concept there. Hmm. Throw it away, please. I implore it you. Took Thank you. Long enough. <laughs> No good. I can't see what you're doing. It's no good. Yes, it is good. No, it's not good. Throw it away. And up and yes, then there's the throw it away. Okay. I will say this throw is absolutely beautiful. Back for it too. Interesting catch. Just, oh, okay. Simple release. Nice shot of creating separation with the legs. Uh, I guess he didn't really have enough time to use the arms there to kind of create that distance. At, at some point, you do have to kind of get the hands up. Yeah. Oh, dang, did he score? Yeah, that was the... Yeah, that was the winning touchdown. Dang. Yeah, and then two... Po I don't remember actually what happened on this. No, we didn't get it, did we? No. That's why we didn't get it. I forgot. So, and then our defense made us stop, and we won. Um, that was a very interesting first encounter of the yeah. this season. <laughs> yeah. Um, overall thoughts. Uh, he's he's is, he's insanely good. He, you know, he has great release, great hands. Good blocker, which he was asked to do more than realistically any receiver should. And then it's like in, he, uh, he's explosive, you know, he explosive, he's good speed, can play physical. Just the, the only thing football, the main thing like on the field wise that I'd like to see improve is like more consistency with his route running. 
that's the main thing I'd like to see. But even then, that's not my main concern with him in general is his injuries. That's my main concern with him. Okay, so durability? Yeah, because he missed at least five games this season. Let me go one second. Let me go look this up. It's been like there's someone doing tape on Partially. Yeah. Um, let's see. College sports reference. He played nine games. So he missed three games for us last season. Did y'all not make a bowl game? No, we started out 5-0, and then lost seven straight. <laughs> Uh, including a thir- including a loss at home to Oregon State when we were up thirty four to three in the second half. Oh man! Oh, I remember that game like because I was at my friend's house and I saw I was looking on the score because we weren't watching and he is thirty four to three and I was like okay cool I was like all right cool and then about four half hour forty five minutes later I got a text from my dad like. The score is thirty four to twenty and Oregon State is driving. Like I I honestly thought he was joking with me, so I had to double check to make sure I read that he was actually not joking. And yeah, that that was very that was ooh, that was very frustrating. So no, we did not make a bowl game. We had to we were we started out five and zero, and we're a ranked team and then lost seven straight. Well, hopefully at least that 5 and we'll start parlaying just some recruits, maybe. Oh, yeah, we had a pretty decent recruiting class. Okay. And having a better – and we've had a pretty good – let me just pull up. Yeah, we've had a pretty good recruiting class already this year and next year. Well, last year, so 2019 and 2020, because – We've actually done well in the Southeast, which we never do, you know. Thanks. Yeah, that's what happens when you get, you know, defensive coordinator from Georgia becomes your head coach. You you do at least decent in the Southeast, which is nice. Cool. Uh, so, right. any other prevailing thoughts that you'd like to get out before uh, we move on to the next? No, I'm all right. Cool. All right, you done? Well, thank you guys for joining. Sorry about the interruption. Actually, the there is one th- more thing. I, I, there is one more thing I'd like oh, to say. Yeah. I can't wait to see him beat kick Nebraska's ass again. Is it your home and home? Yep, we get we. It's in Boulder this year. Nice. So yeah. I'm not. I'm not scared. If we can win in Lincoln, we can win in CU. We can win in Boulder. It's gonna happen. Different team. Different coaches. We'll see. Well, well. I mean, we had an upgrade in coaches. They've had Frost for two years now, though. Who said Scott Frost was any good? Scott Frost. I feel like I just had a, 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 a verbal Uno reverse card played on me. <laughs> All right, I'm good. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, sorry about the interruption in the middle, guys. If you heard that, I'm with my grandma right now. She needs help with some things. So, uh, anyway, hope you guys had a fantastic day today. Hope you guys continue to have a good rest of your day. Um, but for now, don't forget to check out some of our videos from last year's class. Uh, maybe we covered a guy from your favorite team that they drafted last year. There's a good chance we probably did. Uh, and stay tuned for more. We'll have a lot more throughout the rest of the year. Um, hopefully more this year than last year. I'm anticipating I, I shouldn't have any issues over the course of the season. Like we did last year with medical stuff going on. Uh, so for now. Uh, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, but peace yeah. out.